<laughs> hey people, this is the Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw a skull and rose and a nice little frame. Enjoy. Hey people, how to draw an old school skull and a red banner with some old roses. First off, Get yourself a nice oval shape. The easiest way to do this is just keep going round. Just keep going round with the pencil and you'll just build up the shape. Circle at the bottom. Circle to the side. Circle to the side. Do a nice big circle in the middle. A bit bigger than the roses. The box in this corner. A rectangle coming down through this bit, then a line just going around that oval shape you've done. There you go, simple as anything. Right, now you've done that, I'll stick with a pencil for now so you can see. Where well, you got this box shape, it's time from the edge, just do oval shapes like this. Keep bringing them up so you're going towards this corner. Imagine a curve from here going to the center. You just want your oval shapes going through that to about there. Don't go all the way to the box, leave you know about two circular shapes. You know, if you imagine like each one's a tooth, about two of them between this. For the nose, come up a little bit, just create like a little curve, like an italic C shape, and bring it out. Like so. And then bring a little line just in just there. Go that back from this bit, bring your line back into that circle, so in that circle shape, and then curve from this line coming down just around that bottom bit. You see, we've got this curve just around the edge that give you a no shape. From here, little line come from there, so you've got like a V off this top of this nose. And then bring this up, and then bring it back. You don't want to be dead circle shape, you want to have like a little kind of a bend just here. Now from where this bit is, and bring this curve back. And then curve it round, and back up again. So you're basically making like a sort of like a semi, almost like a circular shape, coming up. And cut it through it there. That'll give it the eye shape. Off the back of these teeth bit here, curve up like so. Make another curve down and bring this line back, not all the way to the back of the skull, just towards the back there. So you've got a little bit of a gap. Bring this line in, curve up, go around this eye shape, and curve back around. That just gives you the back bit of the skull. Curve the shape around. And stop before you get to that box. From the bottom of this box, bring the line down. Bring it up, make like a dip. And come back up again, under the skull. From here, make a line. Curve to the bottom of that square. Dip up a little bit and give yourself a bit of a chin, so when you get to this edge, curve it so you've got a bit of a chin on the end. And that's your basic skull shape. This is where we're going to do the neck. I'm going to adjust this now, so this has got a bit more of a curve, so it looks a bit better. And this is where your spine's going to go. Just make little rectangular uh, rock boxes, just coming through. Little thinner lines just in between and just make a little kind of curve off the back of them. Real simple for the uh, spine. The roses, just do a big X going through the middle. Follow this line down outside of that circle shape. Bring in two semicircles, and when you get to the middle, just curve it around. If you that my hat. Semicircle and join up the other side. That creates the initial sort of overlap for the uh, rows. The another one on the top. Semicircle, 
semicircle, semicircle, semicircle. I find this, I find it's best if this bit doesn't cross exact. If you kind of like loop up and just run the edges. Silk here again, and then run that. Send a bit, just make M shapes. One M, two M, three M. Real simple. Around the outside, you want your petals. You want five. You can have more if you want, but five is always a good number. One on top. One there. One there. One there. One there. The easiest way to space them out, just get two corners, one on top, and then just throw your two side bits in. Can't go wrong. Same principle is going to be on the sides, so you're going to put the exact same. Except this is going to go under, but at the minute, we're going to do this. The road border. Now just strengthen up that line. You want the two lines going around parallel, so you've got roughly about the same space. Once you've got that, just diagonally, just add these lines going roughly about even spaces all the way around. And make sure to curve this line with the two lines. So by the time you get here, your diagonal line is the other way around. That's just giving you the rough spacing for the rope. So now I'm just going to quickly go over the edge bits I've just done in pen. So, boom. So line through the middle, and then cut to the nose, just a little flick, chin. Bum jaw. Rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Any flowers? I like to make sure this line is just a little bit further in than this one. That way it looks like it's sitting inside it rather than being the exact same line. Now for the petals, I've teach you I've taught, I've taught, I've taught, I've taught these are my words. <laughs> I've taught a few different ways. Uh, this one's a bit different. So you just go up, loop, loop in the middle, loop at the edge. So you basically have three bumps, one, two, three. 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 Do them all at the same time, it will generally help you get the uh, shape right. It's just like finger memory, you just remember as you're doing it. And you just do the exact same type each time. Now the rope, you can either do exactly what you've done there, just follow lines around in black. And then do the diagonal bits, or if you want to make it more ropey, do them like this. You basically just copy an S curve, following that rough line each time. So you see, you start from here, bring your curve, go across that line, curve back to the point. Just do your best to keep it within that rough spacing. If you stray out of it, you're going to get an uneven rope and it just won't look right. But it's a tough one to get dead perfect, so don't worry if you don't get dead perfect.
There you go. That basically gives you a ripe outline. And then just do those outside flowers. So it's done the exact same, except when it overlaps, just go under the rope and then just stop. And that gives you the basic outline. You can always add a bit of a uh, leafage if you want. A straight line. Curve down, curve down. Straight lines across. It's always one way to do it. I like to add a few little extras just off the sides. There's many ways to do the leaves, you know, don't feel like there's only one solution. This is quite a simple way of doing it because uh, traditionally in old school they tend to do them quite simple. You notice in my work I usually do neo traditional, so they're usually a little bit more detailed. But I think at some point I will do a tutorial just on leaves. And like just little accessory bits you can add to designs. And one last one. Now you got that, and just rub out your excess. What the hell are they doing with Now that's all that's left is to shade it and colour it. Yeah. You can do this with pens, paper, uh, pens, paper. You can do it with pens, you can do it with pencils, paints, it's all the exact same principle. I'm going to do mine with brush markers, these are Winter and Newton's new brush markers. They're going a little bit dry because I left it there for a while. Just colouring in the eye and just little bits just around the edges. So a little gap in the middle, there, there, just a little bit under here. And then what I'm going to do is going to come in with a slightly dark, uh, lighter shade. Just go over that edge. Take a couple of bits in between. Just a bit around the outside of the skull there. And it's going to slowly work in my light shade. You don't need a pencil, you literally just fade out like you would normally. And come in with a light shade. Just blend that out. One side of the teeth, and you want the nose. Bottom of the chin. Just above the teeth. A little bit of back there. And then here just Gonna come down this one side here and blend this out. Now you can take your time, you ain't gotta do the speed I'm doing. I'm just doing this to quickly show you guys how to do it. Don't feel like you have to keep up the same speed I'm doing this. 
I'm going to colour in the roses. Just using the Pro Marker for this because it's solid colour colouring. The Pro Marker is very good for solid colouring, but they're kind of crap for shading because they don't have no brush tip. It's just like really hard tips. You got this in the block one. But stuff like this, they're perfect. You know, you want a good solid colour. Can't go wrong with a Pro Marker. But you want a shade. I recommend Flex, Copic, or Winsor & Newton brush markers. But like I said, you can just do this with pencils. You know, you can get yourself some nice Prisma colours. Yourself some water paints. It's all the exact same thing. So you see, I'm just colouring it and I'm just leaving that one white gap just around the edge each time. So just leaving like a blank white line. Now this is very traditional, it's a very old school way of doing it, but that's what we're going for. You know, old school is not about looking realistic, it's not about looking exactly like what it's supposed to be. It's stylized and simplified. You know, it's breaking it down to the bare essentials. That's it for the red. But I'm going to do the uh, middle bits in orange and I'm going to do the uh, leaves in green. Now this is quite an illuminous green, but on this paper it's going to come out grass green, which is what I want. Yeah. This grassy green is a really typical old school colour. You know, it's far me than old school, you know, like, you know, reds, oranges, this kind of green, or like the really kind of dark, strong green. I like the main colours. You know, you, also, you get sometimes you get blue, but blue wasn't quite as often. You know, it was mainly this, this. Even flesh tones were like quite, you know, a little bit later on. You know, if you look at the real school pinups, were always like sort of done in black and grey shading. Any colour was sort of added around it. So that's the uh, green leaves. And then just orange for these bits. Do the rope in brown. I'm gonna do the background behind the skull in blue. I think I'm gonna color in. I'm gonna leave a little white edge just at the top each time. You can color it in solid if you want. This is just an option, so you can see how it works. You know, sometimes just leaving a little white edge here and there can give a really cool effect. Gonna use the bolt tip this time, pro marker. To be honest, the only benefit of this block marker is literally just when you're doing these big blank spaces. 
I very rarely ever use this specific tip. I normally use brush marker and brush markers you can do the exact same thing just with more control. You can do this any colour you want, you ain't necessarily got to do it blue. I just want to use blue so it stands out. You have something like this, I'd like the colours to contrast, you know. You can have orange, I wouldn't recommend red for this because obviously you've got the roses in red. But let's get it nice and even. If you notice with like you know brush markers and flex markers, you've got to give them a little while to dry. Now don't layer it too much, otherwise you just blur out your lines. But yeah, that's how to draw an old school skull, roses, and a rope banner. I hope you like it. Check out my other videos. I'm the Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.